Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. For today's lecture, we are going to enter a new chapter which is gravitation. First, let's look at the learning outcome that we need to cover in this chapter. In this video, I am going to give a brief introduction into the Newton's law of gravitation which involves one important equation which is f equals to gmm over r squared. We have all heard about the famous story of Newton and a falling apple. When he was sitting under the apple tree, suddenly the apple hit on his head. He wondered why did the apple fall straight down to the ground but not sideways. He realized that there must be some force pulling the apple towards the ground. This is known as gravitational force or attractive force between any two objects with mass separated by a distance. Does the apple move towards the earth or does the earth move towards the apple? Actually, both objects are moving towards each other. The earth is pulling the apple down and the apple is pulling the earth too. However, since the earth has bigger mass, the effect of force on earth is less obvious. There is a law that is called Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation that is used to quantify this force. Let's say there are two objects with no masses, we label as big M and small m to represent their mass, and they are separated by distance denoted by r. So this distance must be measured from the center of the first object to the center of second object. When taking or measuring this distance, especially between two spherical objects, if you are not considering the radius of that object, you will be taking the wrong value of r. So be careful with that. Newton's universal law of gravitation states that for every particle in the universe, it will attract every other particle around it. So both objects will exert an equal force to attract one another. So this force is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So there were two important relations that we can get from this law. The first one is force is directly proportional to the product of the both object masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects. With these two relations, we can now calculate the value of gravitational force by multiplying the product of the two masses with constant g and divide it by the square of the center center distance. So here is our main equation. If we look at the force between the two objects here, these two forces should have the same magnitude but opposite in direction. So next, let's have a look at the constant g in the Newton's law formula. g here is the constant of proportionality and it's known as universal gravitational constant. It has a value approximately equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 and has quite a long unit which is Newton meter square per kg square. However, you can easily derive its unit by rearranging this formula into this. By making g as the subject, you can easily derive the unit of each quantity in this formula. So for force, we know the unit for force is Newton and meter is for distance, square, and kg is for mass, also square. So you will now straight away know the SI unit for G. Since we already know the mathematical relation in the Newton's law of gravitation, what would you think will happen to the magnitude of force if one of the objects increases its mass? Or maybe the distance between the two objects is changing. Will it affect the magnitude of force? Since force is directly proportional to the product of two masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So if any mass of the object increases, gravitational force will have more magnitude. Hence, we can conclude that the magnitude of force will become bigger. However, when the separation between the two objects gets bigger, the lesser will be the gravitational force. Therefore, 
we can conclude that the gravitational force will become smaller. These are the examples of gravitational force between the Earth and Moon and also between the satellite and Earth. You must be thinking why the Moon and satellite are not attracted towards the Earth. Before we proceed any further, let us discuss this question that will explain why does Moon or satellite do not fall on the surface of the Earth. We all know that the gravitational force always pulling the satellite towards the Earth, but why the satellite never reach the surface of the Earth? As we can see here, the satellite will never reach the surface of the Earth because the satellite is moving sideways very quickly at a very high speed. Therefore, the attractive force that pulls the satellite towards the Earth helps to maintain the satellite moving in orbit around the Earth. We can simply say that the satellite does not fall straight down to the Earth, but it is falling around the Earth, meaning the satellite is orbiting the Earth. This is actually the example of projectile motion that we learned in previous chapter. Imagine that the red ball is the satellite. As you can see here, during the first two paths, path 1 and path 2, the satellite is falling towards the Earth. However, in path 3, the satellite has reached a certain speed, therefore it can maintain its movement in the orbit without falling towards the Earth. So it's the end of the lesson. I hope you guys can at least get some idea on gravitational force. So that's all for now. See you in the next video and thanks for watching.